Okay, so welcome. <laughs> so the reason why I wanted us to get together is just because I think that some of the things that you do also relate to the things that I do. So if you want to, you can just introduce um, yourself and how you got started and then I can also kind of give a little quick blurb on what I also do. So you go right ahead. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Hey guys, I'm Steph and I help health coaches grow online specifically because that's exactly what I did for years. I struggled with all the credentials in the world and my, my business. I ran my business as a side hustle, but still was working full time for other people. And my dream was to work my business full time. So after seven plus years of yo-yoing into jobs, quitting, getting them again, I finally figured out how to run my business full time. And in 2015, I took it full time and that's my health business, Nourish Curated Wellness. Um, I now help business co health coaches um, and business coaches run their businesses just like I did. Um, so that's my jam, specifically helping people in 90 days to explode their business online using live video and really getting visible to share your message, share your valuable content, and in return, offer a sig uh, signature product and something that you are well known for. So that's what I do. I've got a group, Work Smarter, Not Harder, that Robin's in, and I'm excited to chat because... Um, Robin and I both run our businesses online and use live video just like we're doing now. So I love collaborating and getting visible on each other's platforms as well as just sharing and connecting because really if um, that's what life is about and what business is about is connecting relationships and um, becoming visible with, within your network. Awesome. <laughs> okay, you said a lot there that I wanted to ask some, some questions, but I'll quickly just say what I do. So I just work with like natural healing. So I also work on kind of empowering other people. So whether they're business owners or they're students or they're stay at home mothers, whether you have anxiety or depression. Um, it absolutely doesn't matter what your income is. I work with like all people. I do lots of volunteer stuff as well. So um, one of the things that drew me into you was nutrition uh, because mm -hmm. I talk to a lot of people about grounding and how to kind of take care of themselves. So I feel like if you're a busy entrepreneur, you it all starts from the ground up. So like balance is super important for people. So I want to kind of talk about how to manage stress, um, like how to find your um, gifts and your talents too. So say, I know I want to be a business owner online, but I'm not really sure what I should do. I'm sure you could also help people like try to identify a little bit with themselves and how to build a platform. So like I do that as well, but we do it in different ways. So if we can kind of, you know, talk about how you would, what you would suggest for people, I could also say like how I would suggest for a person to like build their confidence online too. Cause one of the, yeah, yeah you go right ahead. Um, yeah, I was just going to say, I love collaborating and I have the mindset that there's abundance for everyone and there's like more than enough clients and there's always going to be yes. the right practitioner for the right client. Totally. And, um, something that I personally love doing is helping people with all these credentials. So a lot of my clients are actually past dietitians because that was my background and we kind of attract people that along our journey and, um, specifically they're working in a field that they're they're not maybe passionate about, it's not fulfilling them, and they're just doing it because they went to school for it, which was my story to exactly. So that's what I help people do is really figure out what they wanna teach on and credentials aside, what fills them up and what um, gives them purpose. Exactly. So mm -hmm. how, would, like, how would you suggest somebody to do, like how would they do that? Because I would suggest that like getting a reading with me or getting yeah. some healing done, I always give people intuitive guidance. So I'm just telling them something that they already know about themselves, but sometimes we need other resources to help us. So for instance, I'm not techie, but like you can help me with my techie stuff. But I also have to admit what I'm not good at in order to get help. Absolutely. Right? So I think that's a big thing is identifying with that we're not able to do it all. Right? Yeah. So oh yeah, and recognizing that you're actually going to help many more people when you stay in your zone of genius and I stay in mine and right. we outsource or collaborate exactly. and really stay in our strengths and 
we're okay not to do everything. We're actually disservicing the world and disservicing our client if we try to do everything because that's not what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to do what we're good at and what fills us up and gives us purpose. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So um, how do you help people? Like what is it that you do specifically to get give more detail? So yeah, so um, I broke what I did years ago down into four steps, and that's exactly what I teach on now. Um, first step is clearing clutter or get, getting rid of stuff that doesn't serve you. And often we're living this good life as health coaches. We yeah. have to let go of really good things to make room for great. Yeah. So that's step number one. And then step number two is figuring out exactly who you want to help. So we're no longer you know, a health coach helping everybody. Yes, we can help everybody, but it's really niching down. And if you were to speak on something for 30 minutes, specifically, what would it be? So that would be how I would start to get them to brainstorm and really okay. niche down and get specific on what fills them up. And I always work from a place of keeping the business owner happy because burnout, it leads to businesses failing. And um, the number one way to keep the business driving is keep the business owner happy. So I always work from a place of what's going to protect the business owner. And we're coming from a place of how does the business owner or health coach want to live their life, not putting clients first because right. that will lead to burnout. Right. Yeah. Very interesting. So the first thing that interested me there was clutter because I deal with clutter in a different way, but I feel yeah. like because there's an energy in things as well. So if we're like working in an environment that isn't positive, right? So do you help, do you help people sometimes with that? Like, um, clearing clutter even in their space so is the environment positive for you like do you work from home do you work with people that inspire you or are you um, around people during the day that are bringing you down do you deal with any of that absolutely yeah that's one of the first activities we do is we list out everything people places things and then we give it a rating from zero to ten. Zero is it completely drains um, the person and then 10 is they love it they want to keep it in their life yeah. and this could be very well be their job and if it is something like a job that's paying the bills then we work on the mindset and we throw gratitude at it and we awesome. mark it as temporary and create an escape plan so that we're not just all of a sudden quitting our job but we're marking it as temporary being grateful for it it's yeah. our stepping stone to deeper desires um, so yeah jobs people places things environment your yeah everything Right. So like prioritizing. So for one thing for prioritizing with me that I suggest for people because I deal with the mind a lot is like clearing out clutter in the mind as well. So like I promote meditation practice to help people just feel like they have less weight on their shoulders because at the end of the day, all those like jobs that we feel like we have to do are aren't that important they just we just feel like they're important so i'm all about also prioritizing um even through using intuition so mm -hmm. when we can meditate and we can relax and we can breathe then mm -hmm. we can start working from the heart as you probably talk about working more with passion and what our intuition is kind of telling us to do so really stress is the main cause of um, feeling like we can't prioritize or feeling like there's too much to do, right? Yeah, and it is the more coaches I'm coaching in my journey, um, the number one order of business is to keep yourself vibrating high. So a lot of that for me is listening to audios, meditating, and that's what I help coaches kind of discover is experiment with different things. And at the end of the day, whatever makes them feel good, that's the work. Feeling good is the work. And a lot of the time it is audios or, you know, meditation, um, yoga. Basically I just keep, get them to journal and keep track of what makes them feel good. And those are their go-to things. Um, I always suggest never sell when you're feeling like crap, never try to get visible when you're feeling like crap you go and you make yourself feel better. So often our first order of business is actually going to yoga, doing things that make us feel better. And then when you feel awesome, that's when you can get visible. That's when you can get in front of your ideal client. Okay, so like raising your vibration, basically. Yeah. And I have a YouTube channel, Robin's Healing YouTube channel, which I always try to put like weekly stuff out there for people because when we know, when we know that other people are feeling the same way as us, it makes us feel a part of something. 
So when we can connect to others, we're like, oh, other people are feeling a little bit tired because of the time change as well, right? So when we have live videos also, we can comment. I don't know if people are commenting right now and asking questions or not, but the more we can interact with each other, like you said, and come together, um, the more support we have in the community, and that also helps us succeed in our businesses, but it helps other like other people get inspired to start their own business too, right? And be more mm -hmm. empowered that way. Um, I just put your YouTube channel in the comments and I'm looking, no comments yet, but guys, if you're watching and you have any specific questions, write them in the comments. Sometimes with the live video, it's a little bit behind. So if you ask the question, we might see it. Um, so just ask the questions and we'll make sure to get them, uh, get to them in the last couple minutes of the show. Um, and that's, We'll get to them in the, if you're watching the replay, we'll also answer your questions. We'll go back and answer them. Um, yeah, I think community is huge. That's for sure something that I've used to grow both of my businesses is yeah. having people in a community because we're pack animals. We want to be part of something bigger than ourselves. We want to be connected to people, not, not um, by ourselves, right? Humans are pack animals. So I love, like you said, community. I love using communities to grow businesses which i did for my health business and i'm doing for my new business as well yeah i think fear is the number one thing that kind of stops people from growing just mm. uh, like because to me if you don't need your own business to to grow spiritually or financially so like self-worth is a big thing in trusting that you can do things but when we have other people it seems like it's it's easier because then we have a little bit of a support system or we see other people doing it and then it's like well you know what I could do that too because anybody can do a live video right so I think it's just taking that leap of faith because I'm all about trusting um, mm -hmm. because if we let fear get in the way it's just it's our ego right and it's also like logic so it's good to have balance with our creative side but also be like logical and mm -hmm. I think people sometimes are too, can be too creative that they're they're always taking risks and those are the people that jump off a cliff and die and then you mm -hmm. have the people that are so logical that they may have a million dollars but they don't have any fun yeah and so being able to identify with ourselves like you said too um, is awesome because the more we can let go of that fear uh, the better like just the healthier we can live and also like just help more people because our we have more energy to help because I think there are a lot of people that want to help, but they feel like they're not able to, right? So it's just learning how to like re-energize. So maybe you could suggest something about like how to re-energize yourself from not burning out. What would you suggest? Yeah, so that's an awesome question. And before we get to that, yeah. one of the reasons why people don't sign up for programs is it has nothing to do with the health coach, but it's actually their, their, their lack of confidence. Right. So that's why we see the benefit in giving free challenges or free things because then the client has the chance to succeed and increase their confidence. So that's one thing I was just hearing when you, you were chatting there is yeah. that's one thing. Um, if you've seen online marketers or people doing free stuff online, mm -hmm. it's for that reason, because a lot of the time the client doesn't do something because they actually don't have the confidence themselves and they don't think they can do your 90 day transformation. So exactly. that's why having really simple challenges is good to increase their confidence, not only in themselves, but in your programming. Um, so then something we can do to avoid burnout would be to coming, uh, set everything up from where you want to be in five years. So mm -hmm. not, we're not reactive. We're setting our whole calendar up our whole life as if we already made it. So that's something that I love doing with coaches when they're still in their full-time job and they're just getting, you know, so we're setting up their launch to take their business yeah. um, part-time or full-time is we actually set their calendar up as if they're already doing it full-time. And the main difference is you are your main priority. The business owner is the main priority um, and you will avoid burnout. So you're scheduling your self care, you're scheduling your boundaries, you're scheduling your morning and evening routine all before client calls. Right. Whereas a lot of people at the beginning, they, they are from a scarcity mindset. They really want the money or money aside. They really want the clients. They really do. They get excited, but then they burn, burn themselves out because right. We're letting clients talk to us all day long and then there's no boundaries. So that's what I would suggest is, 
um, before you get really busy and successful, set yourself up with you being your priority and setting up your boundaries, your morning routines, everything before you open up your slots for client calls and client programming. Cool. Yeah. And you said boundaries multiple times there. And whenever I hear somebody say something at least twice, I know that that's a sign. And so that's how like talking about trusting the instincts. So just keeping that in mind too, that when we we're hearing a repetition, we don't need to stress out also about, I have to do this. I have to do that because things have a way of repeating themselves. So it's like constantly sending a message to our brain, right? So boundaries, I always talk about because it's easy to feel like we want to help everyone, like you said. And uh, we can also get sucked into um, work, right? Like becoming a workaholic as well because we, we love our work so much. So having healthy boundaries is so important. Um, acknowledging that like my needs are different than your needs, like you said. Um, and just identifying, I think, the difference between a need and a want, right? Mm -hmm. Which is also really important because we may think, I need $100,000. And it's like, well, no, you probably only need $30,000. So like you were saying, setting goals as well. So probably like realistic goal setting is really important for people and also like positive manifestation. So always... Um, trusting that something will happen if we can start visualizing that or seeing the future like you said I like your five-year goal setting right mm -hmm. it's like I don't want to go too far into the future but I still want to have like a positive vision for myself without becoming obsessed with mm -hmm. it every single day right mm -hmm. anything you want to add there because it probably triggered some things for you too um, yeah, but like if I was to look at one thing, people often ask like, what do you do every day or what's your schedule? And it would be that's my main priority is my, doesn't matter what happens in between in my day, yeah. everything's okay because I have my morning and my evening routine and I did my yoga training and that's how I taught yoga. As long as I had a centering beginning and end of the class, everything in between would be great. And that's kind of how I live my life. And, um, if you were to start anywhere, mm -hmm. um, morning there's certain benefits to both and why I love the evening routine is it basically sets you up to soak or bathe in whatever you were doing right before bed yes. so you can use that to your advantage or you can destroy yourself mm -hmm. um, same with the morning we can't be expected to be these full energy lighthouses every morning like mm -hmm. if that's actually not normal it's okay to have to build your energy up by listening to audios and get your vibe high yeah. some days we'll wake up with all that energy but some days we won't and the main difference there is knowing it's okay not to have wake up with all the energy because that's a lot of the times people get down on themselves thinking yeah. that well I'm not meant to be a business owner something's wrong with me I'm sad no you're not it's just yeah. give yourself the chance to build up your powerhouse and, and do things like listen to audios and things that raise your vibe yeah, I like that. So I thought of vitamin D right away, like getting fresh air and getting sunlight and like eating um, oranges and like little things that really raise your vibration that way too. Because I work a lot with like aromatherapy and just I just put my like cream on with this these nice smelling things. So when you're working, if you can light a candle or you can do something nice for yourself while you're working to give you that little bit of boost to remind you like it is okay like you said yeah 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 and it's tax time so that's something that I always suggest is <laughs> when you're doing your taxes or stuff that you naturally don't want to do light your favorite candle have your favorite tea because it's yeah. just that feeling good stuff to yeah. ease up on the thing that maybe you don't right. really want to be doing yeah because people are attracted to people that are healthy that aren't stressed out, right? So like you said, it's okay not to be okay. So communication in in spirituality, in business, in finance, commun communication is like the most important thing, like relationships, right? If we can speak openly and honestly about things even when they're not okay, people are looking for like trustworthy people in relationships. Mm -hmm. So when we're relationship building in business, we want people that we know we can trust. Um, yeah. But the, I think the biggest way is just telling people, like, if you're having an off day or you can't do something, like, I'm the type where I'd rather somebody be honest and say, look, my deadlines aren't happening. Like, I'm sorry, but, like, be honest because I'm, I'm not a huge fan of people who, pardon my language, but just, like, bullshit all the time. 
So you That's, probably have like, because you're into sales and stuff, you may like, you probably work from like you were saying, selling when you're not feeling overly great, isn't a good thing. So people who are intuitive can read other people's energies too. Yeah. So it's like, you're not fooling anybody by lying or being deceitful or dishonest because like people that are intuitive can see see through that and I think that's why when it comes to sales people are like oh they're trying to sell me something because we've had so many bad experiences with sales when there are good genuine people out there that do care and they do want to help so I think this online stuff is awesome because there's so many things available to us for free now that we're getting over the fact that there are people that are trying to rip us off and that there are people that want to help people so it's yeah, and, positive. and straight up, your current vibe attracts your tribe. So that's all that, that means when you, yeah, not the vibe that you want to be. So if you try to sell when you're not feeling good, mm -hmm. you're just going to attract the wrong people. Oh, so it's a waste of time, everybody's time. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we got to wrap up here because my Zoom link's going to kick us okay, off. I but, can't uh, see anything. Talk to you forever. Okay. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah, we may have uh, to reschedule another time too if we had a specific topic. Yeah. Specific. yeah. Yeah, in the video, um, if it didn't put us side by side, I'll figure out a way. I know if we're in a group, we can just sign on with our um, Facebook names, and then it puts us both up. Okay. Um, same with Instagram. We can go live together on Instagram, and it's okay. face by face. But, um, yeah. Okay.